Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Today in Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, I'm going to be making a microphone. A microphone made mainly out of common household parts. So, some cardboard, some glue, I've got a much more full of tube of glue somewhere, but no idea where that's gone. Some paper, and most importantly, this thing. So what this is, is a piezoelectric transducer. And when it is struck or vibrated, it generates a tiny electrical current, which we can then send into an amplifier. Thing is, this does not respond very well to audio on its own, so it's going to have to have a little bit of help. This camera's got so much storage, it's unbelievable. I don't even have an SD card in this camera. I'm just using its own internal storage, and I've got like six hours recording time on this thing. First things first, I'm going to be using the cardboard as a mounting for the um, piezoelectric transducer. For the piezoelectric transducer. I hate the way my voice does that. So I'm just going to mark around the transducer, like so. This pen will probably run out of ink while I'm doing this. Like all my pens do. Really need to get some more. But like a really depressed heavy once said, I have no money. Actually I do. I just can't be asked or can't be asked to do that. Right, now I need to cut a hole to fit this thing in. Well, that could have gone better, but it'll do. So now I just need to fit this in the hole and fit the wires through the back. Now my experiments doing these kind of, these um, microphones, I've always found that the smaller piezoelectric transducers sound a little bit better. I just need to glue that in place, which is part of where the glue is. Also, I want to take the wires down so they don't get pulled out. Because once the wire gets unsoldered from that, you'll never get it back on. Put a little bit of glue around the edge so it doesn't fall out. And then we'll move on to the next part. So, while I'm waiting for that to set, let's move that over to the side. And we'll get onto the sound collector, as I call it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a comb out of this paper, and then glue it onto that, and that's going to make it sound a million times better. So I'll just use something to make a circle with. This will do. A game with 500, I mean a disc with 555 really terrible games on it. Most of those games being repeats and various levels of games that were already there making a grand total of more like 30 games but you know and yes this pen has run out of ink already just mark the center hole it doesn't have to be 100 percent accurate and now let's turn that into a comb with the bluntest scissors in the world all my other pairs of scissors have like the glue have disappeared i don't know where they've gone You can talk amongst yourselves while I'm doing this. Or I might just speed the whole video up. Of course, it would help if I was actually showing it in the camera. The thing is, as I'm doing this, I'm not looking through the camera. I'm just looking at it, uh, you know, not through the camera. So it's slowly drifting out of shot while I'm doing things like things do always in my videos. And that sentence structure was really, really bad. Shows that I cannot think and talk at the same time. That's why my narration is so bad on my other channel when I'm doing videos about stuff, about instruments and stuff. 
Even though I have a script in front of me when I'm doing those. For some reason I read something completely different to what's actually there. And there we go, we got a circle. And I'm just going to cut into the middle. And now we can turn it into a cone. Maybe just to make it just a little bit steeper than that. You know, that's how the first speaker cones were made. Just need to glue that together. Well, I'll use tape here, but then we'll have our cone. Alright. Cone's done. Cone's done. Just need to glue this onto that. So, a little dab here. Little dab there. Stick that onto there, give it some support while it dries. And, yeah, I'll be back in a few hours when this is done. Right, that's done. Now, one thing I want to point out is that, um, if I was to connect this straight up to a microphone amplifier, because this is a very high impedance device, it's going to sound pretty tinny. So piezoelectric devices do sound rather tinny if you connect them to something that's got too low of an input impedance. Inductive devices like guitar pickups sound really bassy. You know, it just doesn't sound very good. But I'm going to connect this up to my, micro um, my camera's microphone input anyway, and we'll see how it sounds like. Now, for some reason, on this one, the red wire is the, what I call the ground wire, going around to the, yeah, metal bit. That didn't make much sense at all, but, yeah, the black wire is connected to the inner bit, and the red wire is connected to the outer bit. And it should really be the other way around, that would make more sense, but I didn't make this, so, well, I didn't make this little, um, piezoelectric thing. I just hacked this thing together. Let's twist the wires together. Hopefully that's a good enough connection for this experiment. Right, I'm going to plug the other end into my camera, making sure these wires do not short out and stop the signal getting through. And we'll see how it sounds. So, it should now be picking up from this microphone. So, this up and I'm going to talk into it. As you can see in the picture-in-picture -picture thing here. So, I'm just holding it about this far away and actually yeah that is coming out pretty good on the camera not sure how this is going to sound because I haven't built a proper preamp for this but as you can tell I am using this crystal microphone to record what I'm saying right now I don't know what all this is made of and I really need to clean this room up I apologize for the state of this place I will get around to that in, well, later on. Anyway, let's see how this came out. Now we need to talk about the electronics. So this is the preamp that I've come up with. As you can see, it just uses an ordinary op amp, nothing special. And the circuit also is nothing special. There's a 100 kilo ohm potentiometer here to set the gain. And I forgot to mark this resistor, 100 microfarads. After all, we don't want to amplify DC, we only want to amplify AC. And I've even come up with a power supply. So, standard stuff. Transformer, rectifier, smoothing capacitor, voltage regulator for 12 volts. And a voltage divider so we get a virtual ground. So if there's a ground, positive 6 volts and negative 6 volts. And at a later date, I might even explore a tube option, but that's going to be for another day. Got some components lined up, got some, got some prototyping boards somewhere, so let's put this together. Welp, we've had a bit of a catastrophe, or should I say I've had a bit of a catastrophe. So, I built up this circuit, turned it on, and I was getting almost rail voltage out of the output. 
I should have followed the schematic that I drew, but I didn't. So, anyway, I jumped to conclusions and I thought the chip was bad. Which is this one here. It is now, which we'll get into in just a moment. So, I decided I'd replace that with an LM358. Same pinout and everything. Still got almost rail output voltage when I turn the power on. Well, it turns out that I'd forgotten this capacitor in the feedback network. Turned it on again, after putting the capacitor in. Still getting almost rail voltage. So I thought, well, I'll try that first chip again, you know, which is this one. Put it in, and it worked. A few hours later, I went to make the video, and I got the positive and negative of the power supply mixed up. And yep, that's the end of that chip. Fortunately, I do have a spare LM358. Is it an LM358? Have I been saying the wrong chip all this time? If I have, I'm gonna scream. No, nope, LM358 with mine. So, we'll have to go with that. Question is, does it work? Right, so, I'm gonna pick this thing up. It's definitely working. Okay, that was extremely loud. I'll have to edit that in post. But, yes, I am talking into this crystal microphone, and as you can hear, it's working. Although, the low frequency response of this thing is so sensitive that it's actually picking up the slightest, um, the slightest shake of my hand. So, I'm actually gonna have to EQ all that out. Well, this is a bit better. So, I'm just hanging this microphone off my camera stand by a couple of strands of sticky tape and that seems to provide enough suspension. And as you can hear, this microphone is actually working pretty well. Of course, it doesn't sound wonderful, I didn't expect it to, but yeah. If you're wondering why the picture quality right now is so abysmal, well, it's not because I'm using an old security camera to film this that outputs PAL video and I've got that connected to the computer via a very cheap uh, USB capture device. The reason is, the lighting does not agree with this camera because the light's right up there, some of it's getting into the camera. Also, someone outside is having a party, I can hear it. I mean, what kind of music is that? Some people say that I should get with the times. Oh, it's great music, mate. You should listen to it. I say, screw you. Some people think they can outsmart me. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I've yet to meet one who can outsmart Bullet. But yeah, around here. As soon as the sun comes up, they're like... <laughs> sun... Let's party! Still going now. Like, as I speak. In fact, I think there's two parties going on. Wouldn't put it past him to have two simultaneous parties in the house. Seems to have stopped now. No, there it goes again. Honestly, how can anybody call that music? It's just. I mean, there's nothing. No other instruments or anything. It's just. Is that even qualifying as music? I don't know if it is the neighbour or not. Not really able to see anything out there. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this?
Some people just got no consideration at all. Thought the house was going to be sold, but no, it isn't. They decided not to sell it after all, just to make my life hell. So, there we go. Crystal microphone, crystal microphone preamp, and of course the schematic. I know it's not the original schematic I showed, gone missing somewhere like everything else does in this room, so I just drew another one. I did make one little change to it. The resistor. This resistor was originally 2 mega ohms. I decided to go with 1 mega ohm instead. Other than that, everything is the same. Except, of course, I haven't drawn in the... Oh... Power connections for the op amp. I knew I'd missed something. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess that just about brings us to the end of this video. So, um, I don't know if I'm going to do a video about this, but um, one of my fellow YouTubers sent this to me. No idea what it is. I do have a letter that came with it. So, I might do a video about that. I might not. But thanks anyway. Anyway, I've got stuff to get on with, I've got to edit this video and everything else and all the hundred million other things I've got to do. So until next time, goodbye.